I sound a bit pissed during this, it's because I am. I just recorded this only to find out that my program was not actually recording through my microphone, so the entire thing ended up being trashed. This is my second time doing this, and I'm not looking forward to it again. I'll tell you, I'll, I'll be honest. A while ago now, I made a video covering one of my new favorite horror series on Twitter. This series was based around the idea of several different kinds of dinosaurs that lived around and stalked a person who I referred to as Arch. At the time of my initial deep dive, the series was ongoing, and to an extent it still is. However, the series, now called Weird Birds, has progressed to a full-blown in-the-works ARG being developed by Arch, but we're not going to be covering all of that just yet. For now, I want to catch up on what was missed and keep going down the Twitter thread. And also, I want to make some corrections this time around. I notice a lot of people seem to not like me referring to them as monsters, and much rather have me just call them dinosaurs. Well, consider yourselves heard. And another common theme was people saying my intro was too long. Well, let's shorten that up at least, and get right into it. This is the scariest Twitter thread you've ever read, part 2. To recap, Archer's troubles first began when he saw this creature outside of his house after his dog was barking at it. Since then, Arch has been dealing with this dinosaur, which fans believe is Deinonychus. Deinonychus has been the primary threat throughout, as multiple of the creatures started harassing Arch, leaving traps for him to follow and using vocal mimicry to try and get him to come outside. Alongside Deinonychus, other dinosaurs and pterosaurs have started to appear, such as Microraptors. Things turn bad when Arch discovers the Deinonychus have killed and eaten a child, and his neighbors may have suffered a similar fate. After a close encounter where Arch had to briefly leave his house, he returned home only to find that something larger may still be out there, something that when it bellowed, the crickets stopped chirping. That brings us to where we left off, so from here on out it's going to be all new content. We actually start this one off with some good old vocal mimicry, which seemed to really unnerve a lot of you last time. I can tell you guys aren't my FNAF audience, because if you were, my comment section would be unreadable. Someone is talking again, but they actually sound normal. It might be the police? Never fucking mind, it's definitely not normal. I think the same bird-like fucks are trying to get me to come out of my house again. Here is the talking. They seem to be getting a lot better at it. Attached this time is two more videos of not speak, but they're getting eerily similar to actual human speech. Deinonychus can be heard very clearly saying words like open, or short phrases like, oh god, or it's gonna be okay. What many people pointed out in the replies to this specific post was that it seems like Deinonychus is repeating what it likely heard its victims say before they died. But there's more, as the next post also has some more not speak. This time the speech is almost crystal clear, with the words daddy and it's okay being repeated. Although there's still something wrong with the voice itself, sounding very forced, strained, and overall not human. It's stringing together words that are very clearly English. I can only describe it as like when a parrot speaks to its owner, only in this case, it's a lot more sinister. The attached post reads, I'm fucking crying now. I fear the worst has happened to my neighbors. Listen to this shit. He is fucking gone. That was his foot. Seemingly confirming that the foot that was seen in the first half of the thread was in fact the foot of the neighbor's child. And since then, it only seems like the victim count has gone up. Arch's next post shows further evolution of Deinonychus's luring, trying to coax Arch out of his house. A trail of shoes is on my patio. And of course, the video shows a trail of shoes leading from his patio to seemingly the same spot as the feathers from before, indicating that this is likely the same Deinonychus that set the first trap. The giant bird thing is left after some rumbling. The deep voice thing is back. So many vibrations everywhere. It's definitely closer. My ears are ringing. The audio is the low rumbling we heard at the end of my last video, only this time it's much closer and seems more alive, I guess. Something about this one just seems like it's more biological. There's more movement almost emotion in it. Maybe I'm just hearing things, you should give it a listen. From here on out we get into easily the most exciting part of the thread thus far. 
Arch has dealt with these things for a while now, and although they've been kept at bay, it was only a matter of time, really. These dinosaurs were learning from Arch and their victims and making an effort to come at them from their weakest points. So, it's not surprising to find out that they managed to get in. I'm in the basement now, with a charger and food and water. I don't plan on leaving here. The door in is barricaded. Time to calm down. I just woke up. Something feels off about this house. I'm not alone. I hear footsteps. After this, we get a video. A video of Arch running. The low grumblings of the larger dinosaur are around him, as if behind him. It's a short video, but shows Arch running for some kind of fence, but it's immediately followed up by another video of Arch hiding, this time from Deinonychus. Give a watch and a listen. Holy shit, a lot just happened. There were three big bird dinosaur animals in my house. My heart. It seems that Arch just barely made it out alive after an encounter with three Deinonychus in his home. As he explains later on, I was running through the forest preserve and had to camp it out with no service. I recorded some things, but not a lot. I was on the way back home for water, and then it showed up. The thing was extraordinarily huge, had to have weighed tons. There wasn't any explanation for why this abomination stood before me on my block and I didn't need one. I just needed to run, and I needed to hide. I made those videos because I thought that it was going to be over. This, I think, explains the video of Arch running from the low rumbling noise, which has yet to be confirmed as to what it actually belongs to, although I can guarantee you probably have your guesses. Regardless, it seems that Arch has made his escape and returned later, only to then be chased by the larger Dino and Deinonychus, which he then hid from. We're definitely in a part of the story now where Arch's situation is looking not only unlivable, but a ticking time bomb. If these dinos were in his house, how long does he actually have before he's made their next meal? My home is barricaded a lot now. Hang on, the crickets stopped. It's back. Attached this time is our first picture of the larger dino, which definitely seems to be a Tyrannosaurus or some kind of similar predator. I'm not a dino expert, but that's what it looks like to me, so for the rest of the video, I'll be calling it a T-Rex. My sincere apologies to the paleontology community. It moved to the side of my house and beyond. It moves so quietly and gracefully. For something that big, you'd think it'd be noisy. Oh hell, as I'm writing this out, there is something happening out there. It sounds like a woman crying. It feels wrong, but I'm not going to check on it. The woman sounds like she is screaming now. I'm really afraid it's genuine. Now, you may think Arch is being smart here, not playing into Deinonychus' usual luring, but the next tweet clears things up. She was a real woman, and I did nothing to help her. We're approaching some sort of climax for certain, as Archer's situation has deteriorated into the deaths of his neighbors, the invasion of his home, and the deaths of innocents he was too afraid to help, or instead, too paranoid. He ends up staying locked in his room for three days, hearing dinosaurs moving around on the floor beneath him. It seems like the barricades he put up didn't do much to stop them from getting inside, but then even the safety of his own room is compromised. Something is breathing on my window. He then shares a picture of his window, and although it's not very high quality, and kind of blurry, you can vaguely make out something that appears like a head. This is definitely the worst picture in the series, but it is sort of decipherable. If you think you have a better idea of what we're looking at here, be sure to leave a comment down below. But after that picture, we get one of the best in the series, a good shot of this T-Rex's body. This thing is 100% the source of the thunder-like booms and rumbling I have been hearing for a while. It doesn't even seem to notice I'm here. It's just ambling. I don't see or hear any of those fucked up bird-like predators, and the human screaming has stopped for a while. The image attaches of Arch's backyard, showing the T-Rex's back. It's hard to tell what direction it's facing given the closest of the picture, but Arch then clarifies that it's taller than his house. But that's not the only thing in this picture. Arch re-examines the photo later on and notices something strange in it, on a tree in his backyard. I couldn't tell what it was at first myself, but Arch decides to get another photo of it, a bit closer and with a white light on it. I heard a ton of screaming and chatter outside. I took another pick out my window with a flashlight and see whatever the fuck this is. I don't think they care that I am watching them. These fucking things are very numerous and very dark. The attached picture is one of the most horrific in the series, so I will at least be partially censoring it. The object in the tree appears to be human remains, 
possibly from the woman that Archer had attacked and didn't save. What was left of her after the initial attack was tucked away in the tree, possibly for safekeeping against the low-to-the-ground microraptors. Also in this picture, we get our first real look at the sheer quantity of dinosaurs in Archer's neighborhood. In this picture alone, I see five sets of eyes, all from the Deinonychus, if the rest of the thread is anything to go off of. I think this is easily the picture from the second half of the series that will stick with me the most. Seeing these monsters that hide in the shadows surrounding their food, eating what really amounts to leftovers, but was once a person. Maybe someone Arch even knew. The thread continues with Arch taking things back in time a little bit. I should have mentioned I took a picture of this on a dog walk, much earlier, like a week before the first bird thing disturbed my dog at the window. It might have been a part of a police sketch, I think. Since this was from a bit ago, I don't know how long these animals have been around the area for. Who knows what else they've done. It's at this point I ask that if you've made it this far into the video, be sure to subscribe. We're approaching 50,000 subs pretty quickly, and I'd be thrilled if we could make it to 50k before the end of the year. And please, if you think there's a series I should check out and cover, let me know in the comments. Moving on. It's hard to sleep. There are these weird but sort of pretty cries outside. Very loud and frequent. I'll just have to deal with it. I'm gonna make an escape plan tomorrow. The sounds attached this time are unlike anything we've heard so far. The cries make me think of a larger animal. It resembles a goose's honk, but lower and with more of a throaty sound to it. And although we don't know what this dino is yet, we might find out later in the ARG series. But then something very strange happens. Something different. Something that may tie not into the dinos themselves, but if I'm right, where they come from. Arch begins seeing these bright lights in the sky, his backyard, and even in his basement. And when he gets close to them, they begin causing him pain and distort the pictures taken by the camera. It's not clear what these lights are, but I think they're likely points of entry. What do I mean by this? Well, these dinosaurs started appearing at random after no one having seen them ever. Now they're here and there's many different species. Pterosaurs, T-Rex, Microraptors, Deinonychus. Where did they come from? But it's the one in the basement I'm most interested in because it confirms that these lights can appear inside someone's home. If these lights are where the dinosaurs come from, like I suspect, that would explain why dinosaurs were able to get into Arch's house despite his barricades. According to Arch as well, the lights produce this horrible smell that he describes as rotting eggs and forest, maybe indicating that the light is a gateway between a prehistoric world and our own. Even the audio recorded from Arch's phone buzzes and glitches now from being in close contact with one of the lights. Finally though, we have some good news. Arch writes out, the first responders are finally fucking here. I think there are a shit ton of them arriving. It's finally time to get the fuck out of here. But it's not all that it seems. The next post is simply more audio. Give it a listen. The knocking at the door, but the inhuman sounding voice and those first responder sirens are gone. Something is definitely strange here, only emphasized by the next few posts. I don't know if I should stay or not. There is nobody at my door and I see nothing. I don't hear anything either, just crickets. What the fuck? Where did those people go? They said they were the police, by the way, and gave badge numbers. I'm just too afraid to go look or reach out to them. I'm quietly crying right now. There is a man standing at the door now. He isn't doing anything but waiting quietly. I took this pick after more knocking. I don't know if I should go over to investigate. Still no lights. This post has a picture attached showing what seems to be someone's backside standing in front of the glass window of Arch's door. It's not clear who this person is or why they are there, or hell, if they're even human. Given the theme of this series so far has been to not trust human voices, we can't be fully certain that this is a person and not just some trick being pulled on by another dinosaur. It's from here on out that the story takes yet another turn, with most of the focus being back on what's happening inside Arch's house. It seems in all the chaos, a dinosaur got in and started rolling around in his dog's bed. I'm not going to go over every post here since this definitely seems to more so be Arch showing off how amazing his dinosaur props are than any actual horror element, but its name is Mike, 
and it likes cold cuts and sleeping on the couch, just like any drunk friend you've ever had. But then Mike wakes Arch up. Apparently in the middle of the night, some kind of battle started, with gunshots and people screaming. The audio makes it sound like some kind of firefight, likely between the police and these dinosaurs, and the gunshots seem to be freaking Mike out as well. Mikey just flew into the ceiling. Shit, I should have probably accounted for the loose tiles. I can hear him walking around up there. I can hear his footsteps getting further and further away. What the hell is in my basement ceiling? Also, the gunfire has just begun to die down, but there's still lots of distant yelling. There's just a mess of sounds up there. I can record it. The sounds that can be heard next are a lot of wheezing and squawking, alongside Arch's shaky breath. There's also this image showing something no one would want to see. I counted out a dozen set of eyes in the far end of this attic. It's not clear what animal this is, only that Mike went up there, and he hasn't come back down. I can still hear Mikey wheezing, but it's really faint. I think he's okay though. All the noises stopped except for super loud and drawn out creaks, and something dragging across the ceiling. Fair warning for those of you in the Mike fan club, but this next post may confirm his fate. Arch takes another picture where he says he can't see anything. However, looking at it, you can faintly see, just inches from his face, Deinonychus staring back. Arch doesn't notice this though, and the power goes out. To keep the scene set for you, right now Arch's new pet, named Mike, has gone missing in the loose ceiling, where it seems a dozen Deinonychus were lying in wait, likely having killed and eaten Mike if the loud dragging is anything to go by. I'm going to die. Attached are two videos, I'll just let these play out for you. It's more not speech, only now, it's perfectly human. Aside from the weird repetition, these sound just like normal human voices, likely Arch's neighbors. It sounds like a mother reassuring their child everything's going to be okay. If this is the last thing they heard before being killed, it adds a whole new layer to the story that we previously didn't know about, and that it's so refined now is unnerving. None of that parrot-like rasp or squawk that the old not speak had, and all of this is happening just above Arch's head. I can hear something breathing and scratching. It sounds stuck. I'm getting a flash picture and running to the crawl space. Currently hiding in the crawl space and holding my breath with my phone at 4%. Here's the image I took before hiding. I'm going to fucking die. This is it. I think it's over. I heard it fall onto my workout equipment. It's impersonating a woman and child again and clawing the door. The picture attached shows Deinonychus finally breaking through the ceiling to try and get at Arch. Arch is hiding, but out of luck it seems. But while he's hiding, we begin the ending of the story. Arch receives a text from a friend showing that they had been issued an evacuation warning by FEMA, which tells us a lot. Fitch's message tells us that this is a nationwide emergency, not just something Arch has been dealing with. It also tells us that sheltering is considered ineffective, and it's best to arm yourself and wait for help to find you. The situation is looking more apocalyptic than what we thought at the beginning of the story. We even get an image from Fitch showing a dino we don't know, wandering around somewhere in Michigan. Arch and Fitch decide on an escape plan where Fitch would drive and pick Arch up before mentioning the men with the globe logos on their uniforms, much like the man who was outside Arch's window. For some reason, they aren't being attacked like other people are. In the thread's final message, Arch mentions that Mikey distracted Deinonychus, allowing him to escape. The thread is left on a cliffhanger as Arch waits for Fitch to arrive, uncertain of how things will progress. But that's not the last of Weird Birds. As it stands, Arch has teased something larger to come out of the series. On his currently inactive YouTube channel, Arch has made it clear that there will be a Weird Birds ARG series. Mona, I don't understand it. Grilled cheese Obama sandwich. Progressing from the thread to the series, what do I think will happen? Well, definitely this time around, Arch opened up Pandora's box. Or Pangea's box in this case, I guess. So many mysteries remain. What are the lights? Who are the men in uniforms? Did Mike actually die? And larger ones still, what does the country look like under the sudden, inexplainable invasion of prehistoric monsters? This has been one of my favorite series to keep track of, and I'm really glad to see it play out and evolve. Since I last covered the series, Arch has clearly learned a lot and leaned into what made the original few posts of the thread such entertaining horror content. 
infusing it with just enough actual science and knowledge of these dinosaurs' biology ends up making them not only more alien to a lot of viewers, but way scarier. I think it goes to show that people are praising this at the level they are. When was the last time you actually saw a good reception to a Hollywood dinosaur movie? Probably Jurassic World, which came out eight years ago now. Audiences are hungry for good dino content, and now they've got it. I am ecstatic to see where Arch takes the series now. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Peace.